So last time, um, we, or, or sometime, uh, at some point, we were talking about the torque on a current loop in a magnetic field. And we were talking, and um, if we're talking about this, tor uh, sorry, this current loop in this, this magnetic field, we find that the torque is IAB in the downward direction, meaning that it rotates in the sense of the central arrow here. Um, <clears throat> think about um, what, uh, what is motion would be. Let's say it's unhindered by anything, uh, frictionless, uh, except for the only force on it is the magnetic force. Um, and this, this loop, this current loop is in this constant magnetic field. What's going to happen is the loop is going to rotate. But when it rotates, um, the, the um, uh, things change. And it will, uh, w once it rotates 90 degrees, rotates 90 degrees, think about it. If it rotates 90 degrees, now it's perpendicular to your screen and the magnetic field is pointing directly through the loop. And so we get back to this situation, right? We get back to this situation um, once it rotates 90 degrees where the torque net is equal to zero. So it'll only rotate 90 degrees and actually what's going to happen, you really need to think it through, whoops, is that the torque is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as it rotates to 90 degrees. So the torque is a maximum of IAB and then it gets smaller, it goes to zero. Um, and, and we could figure out at some arbitrary angle what it is. It's a little bit more complicated, um, but it goes to zero. It doesn't just, it's not just IAB and then turns to zero at 90 degrees. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it gets to 90 degrees. But think about it, if it's, um, if it's a frictionless system, then when it gets to 90 degrees, it's got some energy because it's moving. And so it's going to go past 90 degrees. This is like a pendulum. Think of a pendulum, right? So a pendulum, you let it go where there's a net force. When it gets down to the bottom of the swing, there's no net force, but it keeps going past, right? So this, so, so what will happen is the loop will, will, uh, will get to this orientation, but it's going to keep going. But when it, go, when it goes past 90 degrees, think about what happens. When it goes past 90 degrees, now the current on the right that was going down is going up. And the current on the left that was going up is going down. So what's the, what's the direction of the torque on it when it gets past 90 degrees? The direction on the torque is in the other direction, so it's going to push it back to the orientation of 90 degrees. So what it's going to do is it's going to flip... Theoretically, it's like a pendulum. It'll flip over 180 degrees, come to a stop, and then flip back 180 degrees. It's going to flip back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And this is if it's a frictionless system, right? So this is really interesting. We can have perpetual motion. Not perpe It's not perpetual motion because we're putting in a current. Um, and we have to keep putting in a current in order to make this happen. But if we put in a current into this loop in a constant magnetic field, the thing will flip back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And this is the start of what's called an electric motor. Uh, a, a, the simplest, perhaps the simplest kind of electric motor is let's let the, um, have, the have this loop in this orientation shown it go and let it go it's going to go 90 degrees and then it's going to start to slow down but it's going to go past 90 degrees it's going to go 180 degrees and stop but sometime in that second half of that motion flip the current so now you flip the current and it's still pushed in that downward direction still pushed in that clockwise direction looking from the top so if you flip the current every half turn the thing is going to keep rotating, and this is a standard motor. Um, it's a standard motor. It's something. It's a way, right? You put a current through a loop, and you flip that current every half, every hundred and eighty degrees, every half turn, and the thing just rotates around and around and around and around. Oh well, I tried to use an animated GIF, but it won't animate in this. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> this is sort of a standard um, kind of a motor. You have a magnet, and you have a loop of wire. Um, and there's a battery over to the left and the battery sends current through the wire and there's a special little device whoops right here which uh, flips the current um, through uh, a, a mechanical means flips the current every 180 degrees okay anyway so what happens is that the loop of wire this thing right here rotates and just keeps on rotating 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 and that's what an electric motor is
right? And so you can attach that, say, for example, to the wheels of your car and have a, an electric motor run a car, etc. So again, let's just uh, recap. This here is the uh, net torque in that orientation, the net torque in um, the 90 degrees to that orientation is zero. Uh, in general, the net torque. Let me summarize. We can actually put this all in one and just think about this loop in this constant magnetic field. I've just drawn one red arrow for the magnetic field, but the constant magnetic field. Now let's let the loop, ro the loop rotate. Um, no matter what its orientation is, the torque on the top plus the torque on the bottom is zero. There is no tor no um, no net force on the top or the bottom. On the right and the left, the net force on the right and the left, the, the net, net torque due to the force on the right and the left are non-zero when you add them up, because um, <clears throat> they're always going to point in the same direction. So on the left and the right, the force is I L cross B, or L is H in this case, so I H cross B. Um, and so therefore the torque on the left, which is equal to the torque on the right, um, is equal to R cross either one of those forces. Now, R is always perpendicular to the force because the force is always going to be into or out of the page. I'm sorry, the, the, the force is always going to be... Um, um, I mean, I, what I said was, I believe, incorrect. Um, I, no, actually, it was correct, but I need to explain. Uh, so the force... So we're talking about... The, whoops. Uh, the force here... Um, no matter what the orientation of the loop is, so just think of the loop rotating about that green axis, no matter what the orientation of the loop is, that force is always going to be perpendicular to the plane made up of the H and the B vector. Um, so the force is always going to be into or out of the page in, from this orientation uh, that we're looking at uh, where the magnetic field goes to the right and the loop is allowed to move. Um, <clears throat> but therefore, the force is going to change angles with respect to R. Um, so, for example, if the loop travels, it goes a full 90 degrees, so now the loop is in and out of the page, so you would be looking end on to the loop. The force is still out of the page, um, and so in that case, the force is 90 degrees to the radius vector. 90 degrees to the radius vector. I'm sorry, I keep on saying the wrong thing, or thinking I'm saying the wrong thing. Um, if the loop travels... Okay, let me draw the picture. Now, so if the loop goes 90 degrees, so that's the bottom picture now, where the loop is end-on, the force is still out of the page on that end of the loop that was the right end of the loop in the top picture. So the force is still out of the page. In the top picture, the force is perpendicular to the radius vector, right? So this is the radius vector, and this is my force. In the bottom picture, the force is still out, but the radius vector is now pointing out of the page. We can't see it because it's end on, and so now they're zero degrees between the two. So what varies as the thing rotates is the angle. Let me do this a little bit. Varies is the angle between the radius vector and the force vector. So coming back up here and looking at our two equations that we need, what, a, what varies is this cross product angle here. This cross product is always 90 degrees, so that just goes away in terms of um, which angle we care about because this is always, theta is 90 degrees between H and B, but theta varies between R and F as a thing rotates. Those are two different thetas, right? Um, you just have to understand. Those are, those are the thetas for those particular calculations. Therefore, the total torque on this loop at any orientation is going to be 2, because it's left plus right, 2 times R cross F right, because F right is equal to F left. So it's just R cross F right plus R cross F left, or 2 times R cross F right. So that's the torque that I want to write down on the next page using the, two uh, using the um, other equation for the force. I'm sorry, this is that's what I want to write down. So torque total on a current loop is equal to 2 times R cross. I'm just rewriting what was on the other page, which is 2 times R cross I H cross B and H cross B we said was um, IHB 
write this in a different way. What we were doing was not incorrect, but it's just hard to keep track of the directions. So let me write this in a different way. Let me get rid of the directions. And let's just talk about the magnitude of the torque. Because we know the direction. The direction of the torque is um, rotating the thing in the downward direction. So the magnitude of the torque is equal to 2 R F right sine theta, where this is the theta between R and F. Where F right was equal to I H cross B, which is I H B times the sine of theta between H and B, which was just I H B because this angle was always 90 degrees. So therefore, the total torque on the current loop is equal to 2 R I H B sine of theta between R and F. And R, remember, was just W over 2. So this is W, w I H B sine of theta between R and F. And we got to remember what R was um, the, the width side, right? That it was 2 times R, which is W, because R is W over 2. And so this is I, and we already did this, I, A, B, sine theta between R and F. Okay. Um, oops, we don't need the vector sign there. Torque total. Torque total. Didn't need to write that all the way down. But anyway, this was just the magnitude of the torque. The magnitude of the torque of that loop in any orientation. So this is the magnitude of the torque of the loop in any orientation. So if the loop is in the top orientation, the angle between R and F is 90 degrees. And if the loop is in the bottom orientation, the angle between R and F is zero. Anything in between as it rotates around that axis. Theory joke. A burglar stole all my lamps. I should be upset, but I'm delighted. Okay, so... <clears throat> so let's go back to um, what we're, what, where we're going with this. Where we're going with this is just trying to write down a general formula for the torque uh, at any point in the rotation about this axis rather than just the two orientations of 0 and 90 degrees. Just go back and just um, think about <clears throat> qual qu qualitatively what's going on. Top view. This is top view from that bird's eye view that we had earlier. And the loop, so now we just see the loop from the top and the right side is going, um, the right side and the left side are sort of into the, in and out of the page here. Um, and so when the loop was um, uh, in the orientation such that the field was along the area of the loop, this the, the top left picture here, um, you had the, the force on the right side um, and the force on the left side tending to rotate the thing. But when the magnetic field was through the area of the loop, the center view here, um, the force on the right side and the left side just balance each other out and there's no net torque. So you can see why the thing, uh, the field tends to want to pull the loop um, from the first orientation to the second orientation. Okay, um, <clears throat> now, so what, what I want you to recognize here is that the angle between R and F, remember we care about the angle between R and F, the angle between R and F is 90 degrees minus um, the angle between uh, the, the, the purple line and B. Actually, you don't even have to worry about that. But let's think about, um, let's just think about the area vector, right? Remember the area vector points perpendicular to an area. Area vector points perpendicular to an area. Um, oh, and B was a vector also, of course. Um, <clears throat> and so the angle between R, remember R points like that, between R and F, R points like that. The angle between R and F, notice the way I just drew this, the angle between R and F is the same as the angle between the area and the area vector and the magnetic field vector. So that's really important because then we can go back here because we've got area here. And we can say, oh, Okay, if, the ang if this angle here is also the angle between A and B, the area and the magnetic field, then we can write the total torque as 
punchline. Sorry, did I cut that off? Punchline coming. The total torque can be written back as a vector again, and we'll describe the direction in a second as I A cross B. Because remember, A is perpendicular to the area. It's a it's got a direction, and it's got a magnitude of W times H, and B is the magnetic field. So t the total torque on a loop in a magnetic field is I A cross B. The direction works out if you choose A. Remember, A can actually be um, either direction, right? So theoretically, A could be, for, you know, left or right, up or down, okay? Um, but still, uh, you know, you still get the, the, the relationships between the directions. If we define A as the direction that your thumb points in when you're, again, it's a right-hand rule. When your right fingers point in the direction of the current, and your, then your thumb points in A. What I mean by that is let's go back to this picture here, the top picture. And so take your right hand and make your fingers go in the direction of the current. So they're going clockwise and your thumb points into the page and the area vector points into the page. That's how we define the area vector. Um, so the area vector can be defined by the right hand rule uh, in terms of the current because it's attached to the current, right? Just like the length vector was defined as the direction of the current, the area vector is also defined by the direction of the current um, in two dimensions. Okay, so this works and this gives us the correct direction for torque as well as magnitude. That is the torque on a current loop. Whew, that was a, a lot to get there. Um, but this is the torque on a current loop. We will um, do a little more with that and then move on to calculating magnetic fields.